Um, so today's, today's class is the anterior kinetic chain and associated problems. Last week we did the posterior chain, the back of body. This week we're doing the front of the body. There's two groups of muscles that make up the anterior chain and that's your superficial front line, the muscles on the outside of the body and the deep front line, which is your deep core. Both of them start in the feet, come up through the front of the body, um, into the neck and finish uh, in the fascia of the, the skull. So um, well, the deep front line finishes in the tongue and the superficial is in the skull, but in the head. So ways that you could tell that you're tight in the superficial front line. Um, you might find it difficult to sit on your feet. You're tight in the feet, it starts in the toes. You're tight in the shins. So you don't like sitting in this position. You've got pain in the knees. Maybe when you're lying down, there's a gap. I'm, I'm sort of lifting my feet up, but there's a gap between the shin and the floor. That's a sign that you're tight in the superficial front line. So when you lie flat, your shin should be very close to the floor, if not on the floor. Another sign would be that you're hiked up at the hips. So when you lie on your front, your hips are up in the air and they're not actually able to come fully into the mat. Um, other signs would be tension in the back, tension in the neck, difficulties in breathing. There's all sorts of um, issues. So um, just coming into kneeling, we'll start with the... We'll start with the muscles in the shins. We can use, I've got a small roller here, which is my new favorite toy. But it's a little bit easier if you're weak in the upper body. Um, could use a rolled up towel, which is similar dimensions. So rolled up bath towel if you haven't got a roller, or you could use a full roller. So I'm gonna go for the full roller. So you're going to bring your knees onto the roller, tuck your toes under, and you're just going to start to roll out anterior tibialis, which is the muscles in the front of the shin. Not my favorite release, I must admit. You can be really, really uncomfortable in these muscles and not even know it until you start to do your release. So alternative to that would be the rolled up towel. You could just put the towel there and you could sort of walk your, walk your legs up and down the towel, or you could use, if you could, lucky enough to have one of these small rollers, you can do a roll here. Now this roller is a little bit harder than the big roller, so that takes it to another level of discomfort. So I'm going back to the big one. So obviously you want alternatives. If the muscles are really painful, you maybe will switch to a rolled up towel. Um, so you're always working at a comfortable level. So there's a little bit of ab work in this. You keep your shoulder, your hands under your shoulders so your shoulder girdle isn't working too hard. You could come onto your elbows if you wanted to. This is an abdominal crunch. <laughs> so you're using your abs as you roll out your shins. You come to below the kneecap and fairly about a quarter of the way up from the ankle. You don't want to get too close to the ankles. You could just put your toes on the floor. And you could just find, you could just do a little bit of a wiggle. You could lift your feet, point and flex. So the things that the deep front line do is they, they help the arch of the foot. They create leg stability, hip stability is a group of muscles. Um, they give stability to the lumbar spine and support the lumbar spine. They're, they're influential in the breathing and they're influential in supporting the neck. So those are the deep muscles, the core. And then your superficial muscles are imp important for hip flexion, torso flexion, knee extension, dorsiflexion of the foot, and so bringing the foot up, and also stabilizing when you take the foot down in plantar flexion, and neck mobility. So that's the things that the, um, these two groups of muscles do. Here comes the cat to make his appearance. So problems with the deep front line. So I'm making you stay here a little bit longer than you possibly want to, because you know if it's painful, we want to skip past this bit because it's not nice. So I've got my toes on the floor and I'm just working. And I've noticed now that these muscles have relaxed, the muscles in the front of the leg, and um, it's starting to get really get to where the triggers are. So problems with the deep front line. So if the deep front line is not doing what it should be doing, you're going to get hip imbalances. 
you're going to get a collapse of your lumbar and your pelvic core. And if that happens, if your core is weakened and collapsing, then you're going to get compensations where the core and the body uses the more peripheral muscles in the body. So you get compensations, transference to the outer, outer muscles and fascia, and that always comes at a price. Problems with the superficial front line could be limitations with your ankles. It could be knee hyperextension where the knee doesn't stabilize properly and goes beyond um, a healthy range and causes pain and issues. It causes an anterior pelvic tilt where the pelvis tilts forward. It causes an anterior pelvic shift where the pelvis moves forward in relation to the legs. It causes breathing restrictions in the front of the rib cage. Uh, it causes forward head posture, um, so problems with neck uh, alignment as well. So there's lots of things that can happen if we're not balanced through the front of the body. So maybe just, um, just come back to a few more of the in and out. So I'm finding that felt relatively okay, but now I've been staying here, I can feel there's a lot of tension in the muscles of the shin, the front of the leg. Put the feet down. You could just... Um, about a quarter of the way up from the ankle, you could just do some circles. So this is where you're gonna to help to balance the ankle, you're gonna to help to balance the knee. And then when you take the roller away, just see if it's a little bit easier to sit into your feet. Oops, let's move the roller. So, you know, you might be here, you might be bottom piped up, but maybe you can sit in the heels, maybe you can bring the shoulders back over the pelvis, maybe you can start to come behind. So in this position, in this stretch, you're stretching a lot of the anterior kinetic chain. So that's why it's quite a strong, uncomfortable stretch. So we're coming into the next one, which is our middle, middle quadricep. So we've done this one quite a lot. So again, you get your roller, you're lying face down, and you're just going to move the roller in the upper quarter. So if you divide your quads from the front of the pelvis to above the kneecap into four zones, we're working in the upper zone. We're in the upper quad quarter. And, you know, just stay here, just like the shins. It starts off and you think, oh, there's no problems here. And then the longer you stay here, the more the muscles relax and you start to notice. You could put your feet on the floor and you could just push and pull. So the major, the universal trigger for the um, rectus, of, um, rectus femoris, the middle cord, is on the junction between zone one and zone two, exactly in the middle of the, the front of the leg. So you'll find that as you roll from the upper quadrant to the second quadrant, you'll find there's a an area in the middle which is quite tender. So once you find that, stay there and do a side to side scrub. So you're sort of dragging from right to left. You're just working on the fascia and the muscles just to relax them a little bit quicker using massage. You could do a single leg lift, single leg lift. You could have both legs lifted. You can. You can do a leg circle, foot circle. So that's a sort of a mashing action where you're using the movement to really circle into that trigger. That's quite a good one. And the other side. So you might have one slightly worse than the other, but they're both going to be very active when it comes to these big muscles that we use when we walk. So I'm going back to scrubbing side to side. Going back to leg lifting, going back to foot circles. So for me, the foot circle is really getting, is hitting that spot and then change sides. So then maybe coming into the second quadrant now. So this triggers all the way through these muscles. I'm just showing you where the major ones are. So hopefully it feels a little bit better, but just stay here longer until you're sure that the muscle relaxes enough to find those extra um, satellite triggers, the little ones, the peripheral ones that are around the, the universal triggers, the masters. 
And then the next one, so now I'm going between zone two and zone three, because for me, so zone two was relatively okay. And then between the junction between zone three and zone four is where you get your second universal trigger. So you're, you're high above the kneecap, quarter of the way up from the kneecap on the line between zone four and three, and just side to side scrubbing again. Sometimes the higher one is more un unhappy. Sometimes it's the lower one. It just depends. So we could do foot lifting. So abs are engaged. And if you are weak in the upper body, this is where maybe the, the smaller roller would be a better option because then you can just lie on the roller and you don't need to use your arms too much. So maybe we'll do the foot circle. And always, if you use a ball on these muscles rather than a roller, it's a little bit quicker and a little bit more painful. So, you know, if you haven't got a lot of time, then you would maybe use a ball and you just get right in there. So once you've done those triggers, you can then roll from just below the pubic bone to fairly high above the kneecap. Just do some nice long strokes. So this is a sort of a rinsing action. You're pushing the fluid through the muscles. You can lift both feet. You can come into a little bit of a hip hike. If you want to make it a little bit more ab work. And then just push back into the knees and just give yourself a moment. We can just pants if necessary. Cats, come on, come on, out of the way. Cats have to own everything. So just do a stretch for a minute. We're just giving ourselves a moment. So then we're going to come into possibly one of the most painful releases that ever has been invented. And that's vastus lateralis, which is just on the outside of your thigh. And you don't need to spend, spend too much time here. So you're just working from TFL, which is at the top, to about a third of the way down. Just watch the shoulder. Okay. And then you would do the mm -hmm. other side. <laughs> Never work with animals. <laughs> this is where I get my feet attacked because he'll think I'm playing. So again, just watch the elbow. Make sure the elbow is under the shoulder and you're just working that outer third. He's, he's playing with my toes. Like I say, quite, quite challenging, quite painful. And I found that with vastus lateralis, vastus lateralis, if you look at my black shading on my pants, it's pretty much that outer quadricep. It's sort of in this area where the black is. It's quite a good uh, visualization of that. And um, it's all part of the iliotibial band um, that affects the knees. Okay, so coming into sitting with, with these muscles, do it little and often, and then it will get easier. So vastus medialis, which means on the middle, you're going to come into the other side. You're going to put the roller in front of you. I like to put it at sort of a 45 degree angle but from the knees slightly out from the body and then just take the inside of the knee. So if you divide up the inner thigh into three zones, you're working from the inner knee to about a third of the way up. This is vastus medialis. And there's a cluster of triggers here and it can be super super painful here so just find what you find what you can tolerate you could put a big pillow under your ribs if you wanted to just lie and just use the pressure of the leg on the roller or you could um you could just you could take the roller a little bit lower down and put your foot on the roller and that way you offset a little bit of the weight 
So I brought, I've come higher up the roller. I've got my foot on the end of the roller. So I'm not using as much weight, or if you can bear it, you have the foot hanging off the end of the roller and you're rolling that first third. Things that you can do if you want to add on is you can extend the leg. So they say it's like you're digging your foot through sand on the beach. You're just extending and then you're dorsiflexing the foot. You're bringing the toes up towards the knee. That's all part of that um, deep front line. So these muscles are always really unhappy because it's how we're connected to the floor and it's where the forces transfer up through the legs um, through the pelvis, through the spine, into the body. So they're working really hard. They don't usually let you know that they're unhappy. So it's usually a bit of a shock when you put a ball or a roller here. You suddenly notice, oh my goodness, this is really, really uncomfortable. So always the roll is little and often and gradually bring them down so they're not chronically unhappy, just slightly. So another thing you could do, which is a little bit stronger, is to lift the foot, lower the knee. So you're actually pushing into the roller as you do that. So this is a sheer force massage. You're using the femur, the leg bone, um, and the roller to massage the muscle that's in between. Okay. Now part of the deep core line is vastus medialis, and then the adductors. So if you come up into the middle third of the inner thigh, same things apply. You could put the foot on the roller if you wanna make it a little bit less painful. So you're not allowing the weight of the leg to be too influential, or you could use the end of the roller or the lower third of the roller and you can just roll. So when you do this one, when you're coming higher, make sure that you're rolling through the shoulder and the hip all as one unified body. So you're rolling like a log so that the spine doesn't have to do anything too compromising to um, facilitate the roll. So this is um, adductor longus coming into um, adductor brevis. And the triggers are mainly sort of in this middle range here. So again, you could do the leg swing. Oh, that suddenly took it from a five to a nine. <laughs> That's up to you. If you add on these extra things, you can do the foot hike. Now, if you think about the three zones of the inner thigh, the, the, the line between zone two and zone three is where you're gonna find your major triggers. In the middle, you could use the end of the roller and just see if you can find that really acutely painful place. So there's two triggers here. And just, if you can find it, just hold, hold very still. So I'm gonna let my foot settle on the floor, I'm pushing up. So I'm pushing inwards and upwards towards the, um, the groin. And if you can feel a pulse, just slightly move your roller off of the pulse. So there's a big artery, the femoral artery that comes into the leg through this, through this inner thigh line. And you're just gonna make sure that you don't compress that artery so you'll know if you're on it because you'll feel the pulsing sensation because it's a big artery. So just a slight shift off of it and you can still continue. And you're just gonna just hold still and we're gonna give it at least a good 60 seconds. So these adductors feeding up from the big toe through the anterior tibialis, through the adductors into the pelvic floor, into your um, multifidi and low back muscles through your psoas, right the way up the lumbar spine, up towards the head. So these adductors, if they get really shortened and tightened, they're gonna start to pull your pelvis forward. They're gonna cause tension in the spine, um, misalignment. So 
And they're often really silent, so you don't even think that they're tight until you come here and then you think, oh my gosh, there is something really seriously out of balance through here. So it's good to keep an eye on these inner thigh muscles. So if you do that little and often, you'll find that that gets more and more balanced. You feel much more, your pelvis will come out of that anterior tilt a little bit and your spine will come into neutral. So that's a really good thing to do. So we'll do the other side, page sides. So coming back into um, Vastus medialis, which is in that bottom third of the inner, inner thigh. So just make sure the neck's comfortable. So if you're finding it's really painful, put your foot on the roller as well. And that way you can control how much pressure. If you, you think you can handle a bit more, you're coming to the bottom third of the roller and the foot is hanging off, which is creating a little bit more pressure. And just start with gently rolling, rolling the shoulder and the hip all together, rolling like a log. See how that feels. Give it a few, you know, at least 20 seconds. I can tell straight away that this isn't as painful as the other leg was. So they're both going to be out of balance, but one maybe is really, you know, working much harder. So this is where if we're weak in our core, you're going to get compensations through one side of the body. Maybe the, the, the body is going to have to find stability somehow. It's going to overwork some muscles. So if you've got knee injuries, if you've got ankle injuries, that will all push it into, you know, the other side of the body. So maybe we're going to do this, the scooping, scooping through the sand and pull the toes up towards the knee at the same time as you're rolling. So it's starting to build now and the muscles are relaxing. I'm starting to find the triggers, but still not as bad as the other side was. Maybe you're doing the lift the foot, lower the knee. So you're trying to figure out as you do all of these things, where am I weak? Where is the compensation? Um, where am I stiff and locked up? Um, how's my body handling the, tra the force tra transference through the body? How is that? traveling through my body how is that affecting my body so normally that would be quite a complex thing to do but you can start to figure out by how the muscles are feeling you know what is happening One more so we're coming into the middle zone same thing as before, put the foot on the roller if you don't, if you find it's too painful. And if you're okay, you're hanging off the end of the roller and you're in the middle third. So this is where the trigger points are for your adductors. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Very hard to roll a roller when you've got a cat there. <laughs> This is where you get mauled. You go to touch their tummies and then they decide to shred you. So you're working that middle third zone. Maybe you're adding the, the foot lift, you're adding the scoop, spine, spine that perfect release. You're doing it for a little while just to open up this area before we find those really nasty triggers. So I can feel now after 20 seconds or so that the muscle is really starting to relax and now there's some active triggers that I can feel. So think about the line between zone, the middle zone, the middle third and the upper third. You're on the line between the two. So you're two thirds up on the inside of the leg you're in the middle of the thigh, inner thigh, and you're using the end of the roller to push sort of in towards the femur, the leg bone, and then sort of up towards the groin and try and pin the trigger point in two, two triggers here in this area. So what you're looking for is an area that is quite tender. 
So you might need to wiggle around a bit until you find it. So on the junction between the middle third and the upper third, sort of in the middle, the middle of the inner thigh, and you're pushing up into the femur, the bone of the upper leg. And then you're sort of targeting slight pressure up towards the groin. Watch out for the pulse. Make sure you're not on the femoral artery. So again, for me, I can feel this trigger point, but it's not as, as bad as the other side. So I know now that my left leg is compensating for my right, right side pelvis for me. So you could do the hike if you want to, or you could just let the foot settle on the floor. So um, you, maybe not moving, let the foot settle. Let's do it this way. Ischemic pressure. You're using the pressure of the roller <clears throat> to press onto the, the nerve ending, the trigger point, to remove the circulation just long enough that it releases and lets go of its reflex, its blocked reflex. So 60 to 90 seconds, it's on such a microscopic level, it's not going to cause any problems other than pressing on the femoral artery. You don't want to press on the femoral artery for 90 seconds. It won't, if you're on it, it won't feel good. It makes you feel a little bit sort of icky. You know instinctively that's not a good thing to do. So just breathe, relaxing into it. I'm just doing a little bit of torsional movement. I'm just moving my foot up and down a fraction just to really, really apply a little bit more pressure and just get in there. You could also put the foot on the other leg if you want it to be slightly offset in weight. If you don't want that much weight, rather than have the foot on the floor or the foot lifted, put the foot on the other calf. And then you decide how much load you're using. So that's about 60 to 90 seconds. So coming into sitting, um, adductor magnus is a, is a muscle that's on the underside of the pelvis. So if this is the underside of your pelvis, your pelvic floor, um, it's sort of on the rim of the pelvis coming into the, the leg. So it's more, more at the side, but near the top. So if you... If you take one leg out, there's your inner thigh. If you feel with your hand, you can feel how the, there's three muscles. There's a long muscle, there's a, a medium-sized muscle, and then there's a big muscle that goes into the, into the pelvis. So you can just feel there's quite deep muscle just at the very top of the inside of the leg. You could sit on the roller. So I'm sitting... It's not on the under, underneath of me, it's on the top of the inside of the leg. And you can just use that pressure. So all you need to do is just sit here and you can feel, um, you'll know if this balance muscle is out of balance because it will be tender. So if you get groin pain, um, if you get pelvic floor pain, if you get problems with continence, um, prostate issues, all of these things, it's good to keep an eye on the trigger points and the muscles of the groin, of the pelvic floor. So again, you would just sit here. You could, you could do a little bit of wiggling if you want to, but it's probably enough just to sit here, offset some weight with your hands. So I'm not in the middle, I'm off to the side at the very top of the inside of the leg. This is one that you can also do sitting on a chair with a ball and sit on the ball and you can move the ball around. So at the sides, it's going to be adductors. If you go in the middle between the front passage and the back passage, your perineum, um, that's going to be levator ani, which is quite a, an important muscle of the pelvic floor that can get super, super tight as well. Charlie's decided he's going to be in the whole video today. <laughs> So maybe now you switch to the other side. So not in the middle, off to the side at the very top of the leg, and you'll just sit into the sit into the roller. So I'm sort of here. So it's sort of at the back of my groin. 
and you know you know if it's a problem because it's tender so for me again this side doesn't feel tender but the other side did and so again that's showing me that i've got compensations in this leg coming from weaknesses on this side of the pelvis so i'm just going to give it the same amount of time so in case you're the other way around And if you find that is really uncomfortable, put your hands on the roller so that you're offsetting some of the weight so that you don't, you know, it's not too torturous for you. Okay, so we're going to come into a hip flexor stretch for the psoas. So the psoas comes from the lumbar spine. It goes into the inside of the pelvis, the bones of the pelvis, and then it comes into the inside of the legs. So we've got the leg bone has got a bump on the inside and a big bump on the outside at the top. So um, this is your lesser trochanter and your greater trochanter, if that was your leg bone. And so your iliacus, the iliopsoas, attaches to the bump on the inside of the top of the leg. So hip flexors. So we're coming into lying on our back. Grab your roller or your roll up towel and put it underneath your pelvis. So if you don't like being so hiked up, um, use a towel, a rolled up towel. And we're gonna just make sure the widest part of our pelvis is on the roller. You could have a pillow under your head. So let's do that. And then we're just going to slide our right leg down nice and slowly. And then we're gonna turn our big toe out and you should feel tension at the front of the pelvis. So that's rectus femoris, that middle quad and the inside of the top of the leg bone. So that is your iliacus, your iliopsoas. So just, just take the leg into fully extended, big toe turned out. How about we float one arm, we float the other arm. We just lift our belly button towards the ceiling and stretch out through the straight leg and just take a really deep breath. As we exhale, relax the belly button down, bring the hands back, turn the big toe to the ceiling and glide the heel back in. So very gentle. So we know that if these muscles are out of balance, they're gonna push tension into our spine. So we'd be super careful. We're extending the left leg. You can feel the stretch at the front of the pelvis, your middle quad, and then you turn the big toe out until you feel a bit of tension on the inside of the leg bone, sort of in the groin, and just stay there and breathe. I can guarantee this is a lot more comfortable because we've done the things that we've done already. So float the arms above the head, lift the belly button, stretch out through the straight leg, take a really deep breath. And as you exhale, relax the belly button down, bring the hands back, turn the big toe to the ceiling and slide the foot back in. So maybe if you float the right leg, extend and turn out. So turning out, and we're just gonna lower to a comfortable depth. And we're gonna lift to, towards wherever our hamstrings, the back of our thighs will allow us. So try breathing in as you lower, that's more connection to the diaphragm and the psoas. Breathing out as you come up. We'll do five. Breathing in nice and slow, lots of control. Don't think you have to touch the floor. If that feels uncomfortable for your back. Fourth one, breathing in. Breathing out. Last one, breathing in. And maybe by the fifth one, you can sort of feel the muscles at the front of the spine going down into the leg. And then just bend your knee and glide the foot back in. So float the left leg, turn out at the hip, nice and slow on the first one. Breathe in as you lower and you're not trying to touch the floor and breathe out to raise. Breathe in to lower. How high the leg comes is dependent on your hamstrings. You can do this with a bent leg, that's fine. 
is try and keep the big toe turned out. So we're working wherever we are, breathing in, <clears throat> breathing out, one more, breathing in. Feel the connection through the spine, through the pelvis into the leg and come back in. You could bend your knee, glide the foot back in. So that's all we're gonna do. Just roll the roller forward gently. Let your back come out nice and slowly and just bring your knees in for a second and just give your spine a moment to just relax. And then we're gonna take the feet down one at a time. So following the superficial muscles through the six pack muscles. So the six pack muscles go from the pubic bone to the breastbone and they're about as wide as your hand. So coming up to so put one hand either side, coming up the front, that's your six pack muscles, one on one side, one on the other side. So starting just above the pubic bone, just see if you could find the outer edges of the um, six pack muscles, so it's called rectus abdominis. And just with your fingers, just do a little bit of, little bit of rubbing up and down. And you're just coming up centimeter or so at a time. If you're not sure if you're on the six pack muscles, just try lifting your head and you'll feel them. They'll suddenly contract. You can find the outer edge. And then put your head down once you know where you are. So just do a little bit of looking for trigger points. The trigger points for the six pack muscles are usually near the pubic bone. So anywhere above the pubic bone, if there's tenderness there, that's your six pack muscles or just below the breastbone. So just work your way up and just see if there's anything that seems a little bit out of sorts. So for me, a little bit in the middle here, I can feel there's a little bit of tenderness here. Coming all the way up to the bottom of the ribs. If you're not sure if you've lost it, lift the head up, you'll find them. Come back down. So psoas, come to our belly button. So the psoas is the muscle group that's attached to the lumbar vertebra. Find your belly button, find the front of the hip on the right hand side, make a diagonal line between the two and go right into the center between the belly button and the ASIS, the front of the pelvis. So I'll say that again, belly button, ASIS, the prominent part of your pelvis at the front, Draw a diagonal line between the two and go right into the center and then lift your head up to find your six pack muscles and just go slightly out from the six pack and try and push under. So if that's your six pack muscles, you're trying to go under the, the outer border and just maybe with two fingers and the other hand on top, just do some gentle rubbing here. So the psoas, if the psoas is out of balance, it will be tender and it will be quite tense. So when things are balanced, you're quite soft in here. But if you feel the muscles are very tense, if it feels tender, then you know there's a little bit of imbalance going on. You can work your way down towards the bone of the pelvis and just see, so from the diagonal line from the middle, working your way gently down, if you feel a pulse in here, again, just be gentle and move off of the pulse. So we've got an artery here as well in the gut. So while we're here, we could just get our thumb under the bone. So we've got the bone of the pelvis. You get our thumb and just gently push our thumb under the rim of the pelvis. Sometimes it's easier to go under your clothing to do this. Or maybe your fingers, depends how, how your fingers are at this. So I've gone into that position with my hand and I'm pushing 
under the rim of the pelvis. So this is iliopsoas iliacus. And the triggers are near the top of the bone of the pelvis, but you can also feel tenderness lower down as well. So definitely for me, activity on this side. And whenever I do this, I like to do my obliques. It's not part of the front line, but you can put your thumb at the front and the fingers at the back and just squeeze the muscles between the ribs and the pelvis. So do some sponging here. And then you could put the thumb at the back and the fingers at the front and just work into the waist. So let's go to the other side. <clears throat> belly button, fingers in the belly button, fingers at the front of the pelvis on the left-hand side. Draw a diagonal line between those two points, right in the center at the outer border of your six pack muscle. So lift your head up to find that outer border. And then two fingers and the other hand on top. And just very gently, just massaging up and down. So it looks like this. You're being gentle. If it's tender, you know that the muscle's too tight. So when psoas gets too tight or iliopsoas, it's gonna pull the lumbar vertebra forward it's going to bring you into an anterior pelvic tilt, anterior pelvic shift. It's going to cause problems in back pain and tension. And just gradually working from that middle point towards the upper rim of the pelvis. So these muscles can be exquisitely painful if they're out of balance. So if it's not painful, you just give it a quick sort of 20 seconds. And then when you get to the bone of the pelvis, underneath the clothing is a bit easier, you're using your fingers or your thumb, and you're just working under the rim of the bone. So you've got these two semicircular bones, and you're going right under the rim because iliacus is infilling the underside of the pelvis and going right down into the, into the leg. Sometimes you notice when you do this that the muscle is thicker on one side than it is on the other side, and that's another sign of compensation and one side working really hard. <clears throat> and just by mass massaging the outer rim of the iliacus, you can get all of the deeper muscle right down into the pelvic floor and into the leg to relax as well through the fascia. So you can work down towards the groin or the triggers are up at the top near the ASIS. <clears throat> you can lie face down and use a ball to get into these places, but hands are particularly good for feeling the tone of the muscle and really finding you know, tightness here, trigger points. If you want to, you can come up Thumb at the front, fingers at the back, and you can work your obliques. So you're squeezing, you're sponging and releasing. Sponge, release. And then you can put the thumbs at the back, fingers on top. You can do both obliques at the same time. So how about we come up to the breastbone now? underneath the breastbone, underneath the edge of the rib cage, and just start to bring our fingers together, start to push under the ribs and stretch downwards. So we're doing our abdominal fascia, muscles, abdo abdominal fascia and muscles, and you're just pushing your fingers under the ribs and you're stretching the muscles. Fascia loves this thought of stretching, it's a little bit like a Chinese burn. You get that burning sensation. It's really, really good for the fascia. Coming down <clears throat> the front curve of the rib cage. And then coming down the midline of your body, start to just bring your hands down toward your belly button. And then below the belly button, and you're stretching outwards between the front of the pelvis. 
Another thing you can do is you can just grab hold of the flesh and just do a sort of a Chinese burn and just work the abdominal fascia. So fascia is like a, a wetsuit and sometimes it gets a little bit stuck and it loses its ability to glide over the deeper fascia and muscles. And so this sort of movement keeps the skin and the superficial fascia gliding nicely. <clears throat> so bring your knees together, ankles together, turn sideways facing the camera. Another way to work the psoas is belly button, front of pelvis at the top, draw a diagonal line right in the middle in a half side lying position. You can also work the psoas this way. So when you do it this way, and it's nice to do the other way first, because it desensitizes you, your organs will drop towards the floor, which means you've got much better access towards the psoas and the iliopsoas. So you could come into your iliacus through the under the rim of the pelvis. <coughs> it's quite a good one to do when you're in bed at night, and you can just sort of explore with the fingers. If you feel a pulse, you move off the pulse. So you can do your iliacus, you can do your obliques, you can do your psoas. The psoas goes all the way up to the diaphragm. So the main triggers are on that diagonal line, but you might find other areas that are a bit tender. And then you would carefully bring your knees together and you would do a half turn the other way. Find the belly button, find the ASIS, Draw your diagonal line, two fingers, so two fingers or three fingers, and then the other hand on top, and just gently, gently massaging. Remember that there's lots of delicate structures in here. There's blood vessels, there's nerves. You're not being rough. You don't need to be rough to connect to the psoas. And you're not causing pain. You're just gently relaxing these muscles. You're going underneath the rim of the pelvis. You're coming into your obliques. So <clears throat> that's an alternative. And it's a good one to do after you've already relaxed these muscles a little bit, rather than going straight in there and finding these muscles are really, really unhappy and it's quite uncomfortable. So come to lying on your back again. Come to your breastbone. So the superficial fascia comes up through the breastbone, up into the neck and the sides of the neck and the front of the neck. So we come to the breastbone and you want to have, start with one finger of each hand and come halfway down the breastbone and just find a space between the ribs. So there'll be an indentation. So if that was your ribs, there's a trigger point between each of the ribs where the breastbone attaches to them. So that's your breastbone, there's your ribs. You're going in the indentations the major trigger is about halfway down the breastbone. This one can be really painful. So this one is going to affect your breathing. It's going to affect your, the rhythm of your heart, so your pericardium. So you know, you know by how tender it is, how out of balance you are. And you could work your way up, going between each of the ribs. So quite lightly, they're all a little bit painful. Another good one to do at night time. If you can't sleep, you might as well work on a few triggers and just, just find those really, really active trigger points. So the fascial system connected to the superficial fascia is going to be all, you know, through the lungs, around the lungs, through the, around the heart. The deep core, the deep front line goes around the heart and up into the tongue, into the throat, into the neck. So for me, they're all quite painful. <laughs> so just, I'm just doing, I'm using the tips of my fingers, little tiny circles. It's a good one to do if you've had a cold or chest infection and you've been doing a lot of coughing. 
is going to help to relax muscles that have gone into to spasm and trigger points that have been overstimulated. Okay, if you come to the, the bottom of your breastbone and you go off to the left side, so opposite to the heart, you're coming about, about two fingers down from the breastbone and you're finding a little indentation between the ribs. There's an, a trigger point here that's especially for the heart. So it's the muscle around the heart, the pericardium. And just do some little tiny circles with your finger. If this one's tender, it can, if the trigger point is active here, it causes palpitations and arrhythmias, irregular heart rates. So it's only on the left side, opposite to the heart. If you were to do the same place on the other side, it's going to be just more for the chest muscles, for the um, pectoralis rather than for the heart muscles. So left hand side, pericardium, right hand side, sorry, right hand side, opposite the heart is left, is the pericardium and left side, same side as the heart is more for the chest muscles. So just 20, 30, 60 seconds here, just as a check. So then coming up, um, just make a soft fist with your hand and just do a little bit of rubbing on your breastbone. A friction rub. And then maybe take your fingers and see if you can glide. So I'm holding my fingers like this. <clears throat> see if you can glide the skin of the breastbone and move it around. So we want to have movement in this fascia. We don't want it stuck and tight. And then you can come even higher. So we're coming just below the, um, the collarbones now. And then the subclavius, you want to be under the collarbone and you want to be one finger, right hand side, under the collarbone, exactly in the center, and just, just press under the collarbone, in the center of the collarbone, and just see if there's any tenderness through here. So I'm using my middle finger, and you can put another finger on top of the finger, just to give the finger a little bit of support. So this one can be very, very painful. This one's gonna affect your breathing. So for me, it felt fine at first, but now it's suddenly shot up to about a nine. You don't want to go too close to the shoulder for this one. You want to stay in the center. And then try the left-hand side. So you're under the collarbone. So sub means under and clavius means clavicle. So you're coming under the collarbone, right in the center. Use one finger and then another finger on top of the finger and just see if you've got any tenderness there. And for me, this side is worse. <laughs> I haven't looked at this trigger point for quite some time. Maybe I should, because it's actually quite out of balance. So these, these triggers are going to help you with your breathing. They're going to free up your breathing. So once you've done a good 20 seconds here, you could make two soft, soft, soft fists and just do a little bit of rubbing in the underneath the shell, underneath the collarbones in the chest muscles and just do a little bit of friction rub. You could do opposite sides, one hand and then the other hand, and just really working on the fascia rather than the triggers. So we're not even looking at the chest muscle trigger points. We're looking at the, the fascia and the breathing, other side. So 
So then ankles and knees together. You could actually stay lying, lying down if you want to, as long as you can see. I'm going to just turn up into sitting so that I can just now finish off with the neck. So um, coming up from the, the collarbones, coming from subclavius, we're coming into sternocleidomastoid. So sterno um, is sternum, cledo is collarbone, and mastoid is mastoid process. So these are the bony landmarks that this muscle group attaches to. So you're going to look, look to the left, and you're going to take your left hand and hook your thumb against the, as you look to the left, you're, you're hooking your thumb into the middle um, part of the muscle, just above the collarbone, and then two fingers on the outside of the muscle. And then once you've found the muscle, just above the collarbone, you're going to just gently squeeze as if you're milking, like milking a cow. So there's no pressure down into the neck. It's more the thumb pushing outwards and the other two fingers just gripping the muscle. And you want to be just above the collarbone. So just squeezing the muscle. So if you're not sure, this muscle can be quite slippery and sort of try to escape. So if you lose the muscle, look to the left and find the muscle and then just squeezing. So we've got trigger points above the collarbone, about a quarter of the way up, another quarter of the way up, and then just at the mastoid process. So just gradually work your way up and make sure the thumb is pushing outwards, not inwards, not downwards. And I'm quite tender through here. So through the kinetic chain, through the deep core line, um, coming up through the superficial front line into the neck, these muscles are supporting the head and neck as we're moving. So the neck is influenced by what's happening in the feet. And then you're gradually working your way up. So look away and then look forward. So if it's not too tender, you just move on. And just explore the whole length from the middle of your collarbones to the back of the ear. I always find as I get near the ear that it's getting bigger and stronger, this muscle. It's quite hard to grip it. So at this point, I tend to go into two or three fingers and just do a bit of a rub here. So I'm doing a frictional rub. It's always good to use the opposite hand. And for me, now that I've done a full check, my triggers were down at the bottom near the collarbone. So I'm just going back to that. When you do the sternocleidomastoid, you've got the bigger part of the muscle, and then there's a small branch that's just slightly off that goes from the, the bigger branch down to the collarbone. So you could just try a little bit of a gentle rub here and just see. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm hooking my finger under the collarbone, not much pressure. You don't want to put too much pressure here because we've got blood vessels here. And I'm just pushing into where the muscle attaches on the upper edge of the collarbone because it's a little bit tender in here. So again, it's more of an outward frictional rub, not downward pressure. So this is the part of the body we have to be the most careful of because we've got um, blood vessels going up and blood vessels coming down from the brain. So we don't want to press on them. We only ever do one side. We don't do them both sides at the same time, just in case we interfered with blood flow to the brain. Okay, so try the other side, right hand, and I'm looking to the right, I'm hooking my thumb against the inner part of the neck muscle that goes, you can see them, neck muscle that goes up from the middle of my collarbones, the breastbone, up towards the back of the ear. So I'm hooking my thumb, I'm grabbing with the other side with two fingers, and then straight away I'm looking forward, and I'm just, like I'm milking, so I'm squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. No pressing down into the neck. And each time you squeeze, let go of the pressure. So if you were doing it too much, you're allowing the blood flow. If you're doing it wrong, I should say, you're allowing blood flow to continue and not be affected. 
So again, for me, quite tender near the collarbone. So I'm going to work my way up. And this side, I've always, for me, I've always got a little bit more of something going on on the left side in my neck. I can feel there's active triggers. So higher up. So you've got trigger points at the collarbone, quarter of the way up, another quarter of the way up, and then towards the back of the ear. So just work your way up. And if you find anything that feels a bit tender, just address it. I am running out of time. <laughs> I always talk too much. But maybe you come back to this if you feel like you didn't quite address something. The scalenes are in the side of the neck, about halfway down, three fingers, and just do one side at a time and just do a little bit of rubbing. So I'm rubbing from front to back. So I'll do it this way so you can see front to back halfway down the side of the neck. And then I'm working into the top of the collarbone. And even if you lift your arm up under the trapezius a little bit, so you can get right into that. There's a little, little V-shaped indentation and just work your way under the collarbone without pushing too hard. You don't need to press hard here. And we have got blood vessels and nerves here. So you don't want to be rough here. You're just using a frictional rub as if you're trying to move the skin over the muscles that are underneath. So what I'm doing in my arm, I'm doing very gently in the neck, scalenes. And it's surprisingly effective, even though you might only do 20 seconds, you're gonna make a big difference to the tension in the neck. When these muscles get too tight, they pull the collarbones up and they compress all the nerves that come down through the neck, into the shoulder, into the arm. So it's called thoracic outlet syndrome. And if you get tingling in the fingers, if you get pain in the muscles of your arms or your shoulders, sometimes it, it's the scalenes and you just need to relax these muscles. So we'll finish with the muscles. So these muscles come up to the, the back of the, the skull, the occiput. So I'm gonna grab my roller, we're gonna put it under the head, just to finish with a roll and the neck. So you're gonna lie on the roller. You're gonna to come to the rim of the back of the skull. Knees are bent, it's always better to have your knees bent and just gently roll the nose right to left. So even though these muscles are in the back of the body, they're gonna go through the, through the, 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 the spine, through the neck, through the throat right the way to the back of the skull and the sternocleidomastoid, the scalenes, all attaching into the back of the skull. So the front line of your body has got huge influence in the neck and in the skull. Like I say, it can cause forward head posture where the head moves way too far forward and compresses the brain stem and the, the nerves coming out of the brain and the blood flow to the brain. So really important to keep an eye. If you've got tenderness here, then you know that you need to be using your roller just to massage these muscles. You could move the roller a little bit higher up so you're actually on the occiput, the round part of the back of the skull and just work on the fascia of the skull. You could stay on the right side, just do some nodding. You're working just behind the ear. So this is where the sternocleidomastoid finishes and attaches to the skull. You could do some side to side, up and down, some circles over to the left side, up and down, side to side and circles. And then just go back to right to left. It's a shame to have to rush this to finish because this is probably the nicest part. Right at the very end is just where we focus on the neck and the skull. So bringing the knees and the feet together, just carefully turn sideways, coming into sitting, and that is the anterior kinetic chain.